How many of you are happy to be in church on a Sunday morning? Um, you know, I've been, uh, the last year, uh, me and Pastor Christine, we were in upstairs um, in bilingual, the bilingual ministry, and we've been preaching, we've been helping uh, as, um, you know, uh, to fill in for Pastor Brad as he was spending time with his family. So uh, every single Saturday, you know, we'll come and we'll preach and the crowd will be so responsive. But on Sunday, we struggle a lot, all right? Not, not, not here, upstairs, okay? Sunday, we struggle a lot because I'll be preaching and literally the uncle in front of me, he de- it just doesn't care. He'll just be dozing off like that. <laughs> it's like you preach a word, I need to catch up on my nap, you know, all right? Yeah, so uh, good, to, good to be here and uh, church, this uh, actually is my first time preaching in uh, English, and yeah, so good. Praise God, praise God. Right, uh, um, before we go on, how many of you want to hear a joke? Right, I got this good joke for you. I tell you, in your uh, family meetings, you can share the joke, okay? So there was a Christian man one day named Samjit. No, no, I'm kidding. There was a Christian man named Billy one day, and uh, Billy was living in a farm. And uh, Billy, like, he did not have any car to get around, so he thought, I want to get a horse. I need to get a horse. So he goes to this horse farm, and he looks at the owner, and uh, he says, uh, I'm here to buy a horse. So the o- owner said, okay, give me some of your, like, you know, your background. Uh, so I'm having a farm, I'm Christian, actually, and I travel to church every Sunday, but my, uh, I, I need a horse to travel to church. So he said, oh my God, Billy, you're in luck, because we just got a Christian horse yesterday. Alright, we got a Christian horse for you. And Billy was so happy. And uh, so uh, he brings Billy to the horse and he says, Billy, uh, remember this horse only responds to two words, uh, two sentences. One is, if you want the horse to move forward, you say, praise the Lord. So he thought, oh, okay, praise the Lord. And how about, uh, then Billy asked, how, how if I want the horse to stop? You just say, amen. Alright, amen. Church, I haven't finished the joke. Why are you laughing? <laughs> okay. So, so then Billy was so excited, he paid the cash and he got on his horse. And he said, praise the Lord. And the horse, st- uh, the horse started moving. And he was like, mm, too slow. He said, praise the Lord again. And oh my God, the horse started going. And he said, third time, he said, praise the Lord. And the horse started galloping. And he started running, the horse started running and he was enjoying it. Billy was enjoying it until he saw a cliff, the edge of the cliff. And, and the horse was going and Billy forgot the second word to stop. And Billy was like, oh my God, what is it? What is it? And he's nearing the edge of the cliff and suddenly he remembers and he said, amen! And the horse stopped. Then he looked and he said, oh my God, praise the Lord. <laughs> and, all right, good joke, good joke, right? Please share it to your family, friends and family. All right. <laughs> All right. Shall, shall we get into the Word of God this morning? Okay, before that, let me just pray. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you that, Lord, whatever I speak may be from you. Whatever that's not from you, Lord, let it fall away. I just give you praise and glory. Jesus, we love you. We love your presence. And throughout the whole worship, throughout the whole service, we can feel you right here, right now, God. So we just love you. In Jesus' name, I pray. And every child of God said, Amen. Amen. You all know you're a child of God, right? Yeah. So uh, if you guys can, uh, turn with me to Genesis chapter 1. Right, that's uh, Pastor Derek's favorite verse. In the beginning, right? <laughs> one, one person got the joke. Okay, all right, so we're going to read uh, Genesis chapter 1. Before I go, all right, before I go on, all right, what, um, uh, I know some of you have like aquariums at home and you guys keep uh, fish as your pets. What happens when you take the fish out of water and you put it aside? You all don't know science? <laughs> what happens when you take fish out of water and then you put it out? It yeah, it dies, right? It suffocates and dies. All right? Uh, Samjit said you have sardine sambal. All right? So when you take the fish out of water, it dies, right? If you take a bird out of the sky and you put it down for so long, he will forget how to fly, right? So why am I telling you this? It's because the source for the fish is the water. Right? So when you take something out of its source, it, it dies. All right? It dies. Are you following me? All right? When you take fish out of water, it dies. If you take the bird and you cage the bird, right? you cage the bird and for the rest of his life he lives on the ground, he will never fly. All right? He will never fly. Okay? The same way, the same way when you take your life out of God's hands, 
death is imminent. Right? That, I'm not talking about physical death, but spiritual death. Right? Because all of us have a source that we belong to. All of us were created to be in a source. When you are taken out of that source, you face death. Right? Why am I telling you this? All right? let's, look, let's look at Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, how God created the heavens and the earth. All right? It's so important. Are you here, church? Amen? Amen? Come on, shout amen. amen. All right? That's it. That's it. Come on, church. All right? So we're going to look, all right? And, and, and uh, we look at verse 3. Can I have verse 3? All right, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to read it. And, and then, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, verse 4, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called it light. Uh, God called the light day and the darkness night, so the evening and the morning were on the first day. Verse 6, then Lord, God looked at the sky and He said, let there be a firmament, a firmament, firmament in the midst of waters, and it, let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus, verse 7, God created the firmament. All right? Verse 8, He calls the firmament heaven. And then verse 9, He says, Then God said, Let there be waters under the heavens be gathered into one place and let the dry land appear. So, just give you a background. God is creating the heavens and the earth right now. All right? He's creating a place for you and me. All right? He, he's creating a place for you and me. And whatever He's creating, He looks at it and He says, Wow, this is good. All right, this is good. Not according to his standards. His mind was on you and he said, Derek's going to enjoy this. Yeah, I'm going to create chicken because he likes fried chicken. He's, you know, he's going to enjoy this, all right? So, so God's creating. And, and, and you know, uh, in the next few verses, we, we see that God creates the, you know, God created heaven and the earth, the waters of the earth, and, and all kinds of things, all right? And then um, let's go to, all right, let's go to verse 20. Verse 20, then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let the birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So when God create, wanted to create the, the fish and all the animals of the sea, what did he do? He looked at the sea, he looked at the uh, waters and he said, let there be creatures to live inside of you. So God looked at the source and he said, let there be creatures right now. And what happened was, there were creatures. And when God wanted to create the birds, he looked at the sky, the firmament, and he said, let there be birds to fly and occupy the skies. Are you following me today? All right, amen. The water is here. All right. And so verse 21, he said, so God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which waters abounded according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw it and said it was? Good. It was good. Amen. Hallelujah. All right? And God said to the birds, all right, and the, all the creatures, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas. All right? And until now, animals, they obey this instruction. All right? Be fruitful and multiply. Because one cat enters your house, they will come out with few kittens. All right? And then verse 24. All right? Let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing. When I get to heaven, I want to ask the Lord, why did He create mosquitoes? Because we don't understand. And cockroach, right? Cockroach is like the waste of the ecosystem. <laughs> kidding? All right? And so... From verse 1 all the way to verse 25, it talks about God creating the earth and the animals. And then we get to the good part, when He created us. Alright, when He created us. And look at verse 26, alright? 26 is so important. Alright? So, so, come back with me again. So, when God created the fish, what did He look at? Yeah, the waters, right? When he, God created the sky, what did He look at? So he looked at the source and then he created the living thing. So let's look where, where did God look when he created us. He says, then God said, let, let, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle and over all the other living things. All right. So just look at it. God looked at Jesus and the Holy Spirit and He said, it's go time, guys. 
And out of that source, He created you and I. Out of the source of the Holy Spirit, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the triune God, the Trinity, out of that, you were born. You were created. So, if you take the fish out of the sea, it dies. If you take us from the triune God, from God, we face death as well. Because our source is the Lord. So, we, yeah, exactly. Wow. <laughs> our source is the Lord. Our source is our Father. So, when you take yourself away from the Father, what happens is death starts up here. So, that's exactly what happened with Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis is that they fell they fell into this, um, this the sin, all right? And what they did immediately was they went to hide. They went to hide. Do you understand, church? They went to hide. So what they would do is they were plugging themselves out from the source. And what happened was when God, when, when the source of all things, the creator of all things, walked into the garden and asked for them, they were ashamed. They were ashamed because they looked at themselves, they were naked, and that's when death crept into the earth. So, are you following me today? So, there is a source for everything. When you are on your laptop, working hard, without the battery plugged in, all right, after a couple of hours, what does your laptop say? Dude, I'm going to die. Please plug in a battery source, a power source. That's what it's going to say. Please plug in a power source. That's the exact word your laptop will say. If your laptop needs it to survive, how much more we need our Father to survive, church? Do you, you guys get what I'm saying today? Do you guys get what I'm saying? All right. So God did not wake up. God did not wake up one day and he created and he was like, dude, I'm so bored. I'm over time. Like, you know, he's over time. Time is not over him, you know, he's over time, right? And he's like, oh, I'm bored. You know what? Let's just hang, uh, let's just create floating balls of solar system and then we'll see where I go with this. All right. He did not create the heavens and the earth and then thought of you. And then thought of you. Alright, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1 today and let's, let's find out what God was really thinking when He created the heavens and the earth. Ephesians chapter 1, I think you can go to verse 4. Alright, verse 3, verse 3, alright? This is Paul writing and he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly, heavenly places in Christ. Verse 4. Right. Take, take, take note of this. Just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. That means before God even conceived the, the, the thought of creating the heavens of the, and the earth, you were conceived in the thought of the Lord, in the mind of Christ. You understand? Before the foundation of the world, Derek's face was bright and clear in the eyes of the Lord. Your face was bright and clear in the eyes of the Lord. And he's like, I'm going to create a playground for just you and me. That's why He created the heavens and the earth. That's why He created the Garden of Eden. It was to fellowship together with you. The creator of the universe, creating specks of dust as us, but still He wants to come down and have your heart. That's how much the Father loves each and every one of us. He loved us so much that He created earth as a playground for me and Him. Before the foundations of the world, you were conceived in the mind of God. How special you are to Him. How special you are to Him. And another thing it says in Genesis chapter 1, let's, let us make man in our own image, church. In our, that means you have the image of Christ wherever you are. Maybe not in your face, in your physical body, because God is spirit. God is spirit. And our spirit is likened to His spirit. Wherever you go, you carry the Spirit of the Lord. All right? Let's look at the process of creating human, all right? The process of God creating human, okay? He builds, He takes the dust of the earth, He forms man, all right? He forms man right in front of Him. But man is still dead. It's just a physical body. And what happens? What happens, church? What happens to bring this man alive? This is what happens, all right? 
You see, the word, another word for Holy Spirit in the Hebrew, uh, in the translation of Hebrew is ruach. All right, ruach. What does ruach mean? Ruach me- directly translates to breath of life or wind. A wind, all right? Wind. Although we don't see wind, we can feel wind. Right? Although we don't see the Holy Spirit, we, He's likened to wind and the breath of life. So what happens was, He builds man up. Man is still dead. He goes close to man and the Lord breathes in the breath of life into man. The Lord marks man at the beginning of time with the Holy Spirit. So all of us have wind inside. Some of you need Eno. All right? All of us have wind. God's going to heal your gastric problems today. All, right? all of us has the wind of God inside of us. He breathed in the breath of life into man and that's when man came to, came to life came to life. So the Holy Spirit, Ruach, is called the wind. He's called the breath of life. And the, since the beginning of time, God has already breathed the breath of life into you. Alright? So when God created the heavens and the earth, did He go to work? Did He go to like a construction? Tuck, 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 tuck. No. He just commanded with the breath of His air and it came to light. Right? Let there be light and light appeared. Right? He looked at the sky. Let there be birds and out of nowhere... Birds started flying. Penguins started rolling down. And out of nowhere, the creatures of the sea just came. So the same breath that was in the breath of God that commanded creation to come to be is the same breath that's within all of you today. Some of you will get it when you go home. <laughs> all right, The same breath that was within God was breathed into you. Was breathed into you. All right? So if God, my God, my Father has the power to create things out of nothing, the same bread that was within him is the same bread is within me today. I have the authority to create something out of nothing as well. That's how powerful I am today. Because I just look exactly like my father. You look exactly like your father too today. Your spiritual father. The Father in heaven, you look exactly like Him. There's a marking on you ever since the beginning of time. The mark was the Holy Spirit as we breathe into you. The Holy Spirit didn't just appear in the New Testament, you know. Like, palm, oh yeah, I'm a genie in a bottle, you know. No such thing. The Holy Spirit existed in the beginning of time together with Jesus. For Jesus is John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. So that shows that the Father, Son, Holy, and the Holy Spirit existed way before time was even conceived. And, that, and, 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 and out of that beautiful friendship and family relationship that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit had, you came to be. You came to be. And so I want to tell you about your DNA. You look exactly like your Father. You look exactly like your Father. When you said yes to Jesus, the Bible says that you automatically, you receive the spirit of adoption and you have become a child of God. So church, why am I telling you this? Why am I telling you? Why am I speaking about the source? Because the source is life. Today, we, are not, we shouldn't stand outside the source. Because we were created, we were created to look just like Him, to be just like Him and to be together with Him. Do you understand what I'm saying this morning? Right? Am I preaching to the right people today? Because right? He loves you so much. He cares for you so much. The creator of the universe wants to fellowship with the dust, the speck of dust of the universe, which is us. Because why? You just, you look exactly like Him. You look exactly like Him. And whatever, in the book of Colossians, uh, it says that, you know, Jesus says, as I am, as we are, No, so as he is, so are we. That's found in the New Testament, guys. As he is, so are we. So today, let me tell you, when you are plugged into the source, there is a direct connection from Jesus to you, from God to you. There is a direct, a direct connection that wherever you go, there is heavens opening up over you and just following you wherever you go. 
wherever you go. You see, Jesus, when he started his ministry, he was 30 years old. Some of you young people, don't worry, you've got a lot of time. He started his ministry when he was 30 years old. And what happened? What was the beautiful thing about his, his, the start of his ministry? He was baptized and the heavens split open and a dove came and rest upon him. And who's the dove? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came and rested upon him. And what did the father say? This is my son in whom I am well pleased. All right? So when he started his ministry, the heavens opened and the dove, the Holy Spirit came and rest upon him. Today, wherever you walk, you walk with the Holy Spirit on you. And there is a heaven that's open over you, church, and constantly reminding you, this is my daughter in whom I'm well pleased. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Do you get the revelation? There is an open heaven over you. So uh, when, when God created the heavens and the earth, He spoke to nothing and something came to be. Church, in your workplace, you can speak to nothing and something will come to be. In your business, when you speak to nothing, something will come to be. In, 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 your, in your relationship with your family that is so broken, speak into the nothing and something will come to be, church. That's how powerful the Ruach that's within you. That's the Holy Spirit within you. You can't run away from it. What do you want to do? Blow him out? <laughs> you, you can't blow the Holy Spirit out of it, out of yourself. Wherever you go, you are marked. You, church, you have nowhere to run. You are marked by the Holy Spirit. And that, let me tell you, that's not bad news. That's really good news for you. Alright, that's really good news. Because when Jesus started his ministry, in the next couple of verses, he says, Jesus grew in favor with man and God. So when you walk with the open heavens within you, you don't only go get favor with men. The Lord, the, you're, you're not only you know pleased. You know, with the, the Lord is not really pleased with you. Men around you will start finding favor in you. That's the power of the Lord, church. Why am I trying to tell you this? Because you are royalty. You are royalty, church. You're not just some kind of person trying to live seventy years and then get up to heaven. The mission was never get to get to heaven. Your mission when you were born was never to get to heaven. Your mission, church, when we were born was to bring heaven down, church. Was to bring heaven down. Was to manifest the power of God wherever you are. That's your mission. Do you think God is standing at the gate of heaven and He's like playing like a goalkeeper? Like, no, you can't pass. Thou shall not pass. No, He's not, he's not there. Alright? He's with you right now. And He cares about the open heaven that you will bring into your workplace. You will bring into your business. Church, some of you, your business is doing well, but the Lord says, dream big. I have bigger plans for you. Those who have your own business, I pray you receive it. The Lord is saying, hey, this is too small. Although it's maybe big for you, but the Lord is saying, hey, buddy, this is too small. There's something greater for you. I just feel some of you, there's some of you, like businesses here, it's going international. Lord's giving you the grace, the, 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 the anointing to go international. Why, church? Because you are royalty. In the book of Peter, it says, because you are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation, a royal priesthood. You know, if you look at all the uh, movies, you know, where kings and prince are, you know, a, a, a prince never goes out of his house with just normal clothes, all right? He usually flaunts it. He wears a cape. He rides on his white horse, right? And he goes into town and people know, okay, okay, the prince has come. The king has come, right? The same way, church, the same way some of you, you're putting your cape aside and you're going out. Some of you, you need to get back and wear back your royalty robe. Royalty robe. Royalty robe. And let me tell you, all right? Look at the prodigal son, all right? So, uh, you know, why am I telling you this? You know, we're talking about the source. We're talking about the family of the Trinity. And we, 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 we're talking about the aspect of family as well. The, the, the prodigal son, the beloved son, goes to the father and says, I want my inheritance. In those days, when you ask your father your inheritance to leave, it means practically, all right, you're saying that, dad, you're dead to me, I'm off. Like, you know, I'm going off. So imagine you love your son like man and he comes to you, papa. Bye. Like, give me my inheritance. I'm gone. That will have broken the father's heart. Amen? That will have broken the father's heart. But because he loves his son so much, all right, 
He gives him all his inheritance. And what the son does is he goes out and he spends it all. And, you know, he falls into sin. He falls and he starts, you know, uh, sleeping with pigs. And, and he looks at the pigs and they are eating the mud. And he's like, oh, my God, that tastes so good. And he, he, the Bible says even the pigs didn't want to share his, their food with him. Can you imagine how low <laughs> his sta- Guys, his standards have fallen, all right? His standards has really fallen. Because the pigs look at him, guy, dude, get your own food, you know, <laughs> this is mine. So his standards has really fallen, all right? And so he thinks to himself and he's like, oh man, even the servants in the house of my father has food and a place to sleep. And so what he thinks is that, you know what, maybe I'll head back to my dad and tell him, you know what, don't, because I already said you're dead to me, and don't take me back as a son, take me back as a servant, all right? Listen to this closely, all right? Don't take me back as a son, take me back as a servant. And he walks and he walks towards home. And the father from afar sees him. All right, what are the odds on that day the father is looking out his window and he sees his son? Right, the odds are very slim. But you know what makes the odds great? Is that every day, if the father comes to the window and watches, looks out and waits for his son, that makes the odds, the chances higher. Amen? Amen? And so the father, I think, like for me, what I feel is that every day he's at this window, son, come back. Son, come back. You just left your sauce. His sauce was his home, right? He left and even the pigs didn't want to share his food with him. And he, he, and he walks back, church, all right? So I, I'm connecting this to the royalty robe that I talked to you about, all right? And so he sees his son walking back. And immediately, church, when you take one step back to the Lord, the Lord takes the next 5,000 steps towards you. That's how lovely Jesus is, you know. That's how, I hope you catch how lovely Jesus is. Because he, he can love you like no one else can. And, 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 and he starts walking towards uh, the, 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 the Father, and the Father starts running towards him. And the Father, immediately the first thing that he does is he embraces him. And in the, in the message translation is that the, fa- the, the son is trying to look at the dad and say, Dad, I'm sorry. Even before he can say sorry, the Bible writes that the dad interrupted him with a hug. Dad was like, Shh. like, dude, shut up. Like, I love you. And even before he could say sorry, I'm a sinner. And, and the Lord is saying, I'm not interested in that. You are back home, son. You're back in the sauce. You're back in the sauce. And he starts hugging him. And the first thing he does is go and get, you know, this robe, this ring, these sandals, and look for a fat cow over there and kill him. I pity the fat cow that day. Because he's like, he's living his life eating and he suddenly is like, oh, I'm, I'm gone now. <laughs> you know? All right. And he looks at the sun and the first thing he does is he puts the robe. So what does the robe signify? The robe signify your authority as a son and daughter. So when he left, he left with nothing, but when he returned to the father, immediately the father restored his authority. So why do you have authority, church? Why do you have authority? Why do you have authority? Right? In the beginning of time, Jesus said that let us make men in our own image and our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the seas and the birds of the air and every living creature. That's the authority God has given you to me. And the same authority is that to create something out of nothing. Immediately, He gives the authority back to the Son. He gives Him the ring and He said, Your feet are dirty, Son. Have these sandals. And he said, come, let us celebrate because my son has written to the source of his life. The source of his life. Church, are you getting? Right? This is not some chili sauce or something. It's sauce, right? Some of you are thinking, oh, what? (laughs) Sauce. Right? You know, and he returns back. And it's an amazing story. And it's not actually, for me, it's not the story of the prodigal son. It was never about the prodigal son. It's the story of the loving father, church. It's the story of the loving father. The message translation gets it. Because every, every chapter, there is a, uh, what do you call that? A sub, a heading, right? A heading, right? So, uh, the, if you look at NKJV, it, it has the, the story of the lost son, the story of the lost coin, the lost sheep. But the message translation gets it. They, doesn't have, they don't have the story of the lost son. They have the story of the loving father. Because the, the, the whole emphasis of this 
was broken man comes back to God with all of his brokenness and the amazing love of the Father still accepts him. Still accepts him. Why? Because the Lord is, the Lord is here to just restore and restore and restore. Restore your authority. Church, I'm talking to those people who feel like you're out of the source today. You feel like you're not in the source. Everything's going wrong to you. Just get back to Jesus. Just get back to Jesus. Get back to the arms of the Father. How do I do it? I don't know. Just go into your room. That's what Matthew 6, 6 says. Go into your room. Shut the door. That's it, church. I don't have formulas for you to get the presence down. Like E equals MC square. No, it doesn't work that way. The Lord is so personal with you that even in the bus when you're, when you're going to work, He's sitting right beside you. Even though that uncle is sleeping right beside you and he's leaning on you, He's still right beside you. And every day, church, every day, I used to travel to Singapore, right, to work. Every day when I sit, I can feel the embrace of the Lord. Like I feel I'm not alone, church. I'm traveling with a friend every day. And that makes it much better. Every day waking up in the morning and, you know, when you get to the customs, it's really jammed. So some of us, we need to walk the bridge. That's my daily workout, walking the bridge, right? 2 k.m., just walking in the morning. Church, you're just walking, nothing else to do. Nothing else to do. But I know I'm walking with, walking with my father, you know. I know like as a little son, my father is holding my hand and he's taking me. Come, let's go. On days when I feel so tired, when I feel like giving up, the father is like, hey, dude, let's do this together. And I'll be talking, Lord, you know, uh, this Friday I'm going to preach and you what to preach. I don't even know, you know, that time, like small, small struggles, you know. You know, and, and, and there is a constant communication with the father and the son. And today, he wants that with you, church. Come back to the source. I'm encouraging all of you. Just come back to the source. Today, if your laptop is dying, if your laptop is dying, come on, plug it back to the power source. Plug it back to the power source. And he will recharge you up. He will recharge. And, 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 and let me tell you, when, when, you know, when you plug in, right, then the icon on your um, laptop goes green, right? It means it's charging. Uh, I mean, on your phone as well, right? It's charging, right? And, and, and I, I love these things. I don't love Android phones. No, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I love these things about Android phones is that I, I have an iPhone. Huh? <laughs> I love this thing about Android phone. I, I've seen, I don't know whether it's Oppo, uh, Samjit's phone. When you plug it in, right, the, the, the charging anim animation is like you see like little powers going towards the phone, right? Right? And it's so interesting when I look at it, it's like, Wow, it's like life is being transferred into it, you know. <laughs> life is just going, right? And, you know, too much life and your phone gets pregnant, right? Yeah, that's Android phones, not iPhones. Huh? <laughs> Kidding. But, but I love that animation of like life just going in. Life is just going in. When you're plugged into the source, church, get ready. Because in everything that you face, life will be there. In your business, life will be there. In your sickness, life will be there as well. Everything, if your heart is not healed today, plug into the source. Plug into the source and your heart will get healed. That's what the Bible says. This is the standard that we live to. This is the standard that I hold on to. Right? This is the standard. If the Bible says what I am is what I am, that means it's I am. If, if, if the Bible says that by Jesus' stripes we have been healed, have been healed, that means I claim this word because this is the standard. This is the standard that we have. Right? So whatever the Bible says I am, I am. And so I love that when life goes, in, life goes into you, that means in everything that you face, there is life and life abundantly. Life and life abundantly. If you ask God for 10, because He's such a life giver, He will give you 20. He will give you abundance. Everlasting life and eternal life. Eternal life, when is it? It's when you cross over, you walk into eternity with Jesus. That talks about quantity. Quantity. Right? That talks about quantity. What's your quantity? Eternal. But right here, the Lord has given you a promise of quality, abundance. Abundance. Abundant life. Right? That's, that talks about quality. The quality of life that you are supposed to have on earth. Church, I don't want to be rich when I get to heaven. What can I buy? I don't know. <laughs> like, what's the point getting rich in heaven? No, I'm here. 
Lord, I'm here to be so blessed that I can start giving out to others. That's life and life abundantly. Powerful church, you, you understand what I'm saying? And so another way that you can step into this life is through communion. Communion, right? We're going to take communion in a while. Right? Communion, when you eat the bread, right? The bread speaks about His body, right? His body. Let me ask you this, because I was just thinking last night, you know, church, I was just thinking about the disciples. They had just seen their master uh, hit and, and, and whacked and, you know, killed, murdered, right, on the cross. I was just thinking when I, a couple of years ago, I was on the road with my dad. We were traveling back from Kluang to JB, and I was quite young then. And we were going, and then we saw a motorbike accident right in front of us, okay? And uh, this guy hits into the car, and he literally, church, he flies up. And he lands down. And me and my dad get off. We go to him and he's unconscious on the floor and he's bleeding and stuff like that. And ever since then, I was like, oh my God. And just a couple of weeks ago, uh, something happened to one of our church members as well. And it was on a motorbike accident. And so for, uh, that side itself gives me like a bit of like a anxiety, like a wow, like trauma. Imagine the disciples, what they had to go through. They looked at their father, I mean, their leader, you know, Jesus, and he's getting flogged and he's getting um, um, whipped. And, 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 and do you know the Passion of Christ? Passion of Christ, right? The movie, I, I can't stop crying. Every time you see it, I see that movie, like, it's just like another revelation of the love of the Father. You know, just another revelation. And, and, and they, you know, um, scholars have said that Passion of Christ is just 30% of what really happened to Jesus. 30%. All right? So imagine that. And, and I'm thinking like, God, the disciples would have gone through such trauma looking at their uh, leader getting like whipped and killed like that on the cross. Such trauma, blood everywhere, disfigured face. It says that Jesus was disfigured. Even the Father did not recognize Him on the cross. All right? But the Father didn't forsake Him. The Father did not forsake the Son on the cross. You know, I don't know, some preachers preach that the Father turned His uh, face away from Jesus. Which Maria told you that? <laughs> Church, if you go back and read, it's not written in the Bible. Right? It's not in the Bible that Jesus, uh, God the Father turned His face away from Jesus. <laughs> you know, it's not written. So why am I telling you this? The disciples went through such trauma, alright? Such trauma. The disciples went through such trauma. And, and, and the thing is, they could have given up. They could have said, you know, I'm done with your Christianity. Just keep it. I'm not going to die like you. I'm not going to die like you and I'll just walk away. All right? And many, ma many people said that uh, I don't believe that Jesus existed. There's many arguments that Jesus didn't exist and, and or we don't believe the history books. We don't believe your Bible as well. And so, and, and, and I, I was seeing this argument and the scholar asked that, that, that person, so you're telling me that Jesus did not exist? And all these disciples just simply signed up for something to die for. Because if you re read at how the disciples died, you will lose your mind. So the, the disciples did not believe in something and they just went into something to start a cult and then just die off like that. Were they addicted to pain or what? And the, the, the person who's arguing couldn't answer. Couldn't answer. So you, you see that the, the disciples went through such a traumatic experience, but still, but still, they carried the gospel and because of them, we are here today. Because of them, we have this book. My God, what will we do without this book? So understand, you understand the authority and the power Jesus gave to the disciples before He left? He said, I go, but when I go, I will send you the helper. The helper. And the Holy Spirit, the, the disciples was like, yes. Yes. And the helper is not just like a slice of Jesus within you. It's like not a slice of cake. No, you get the whole cake, church. You get the whole thing. Martin will be happy if he gets the whole cake. <laughs> no, you get the whole package. You get the whole package. And it's all within you. So I just close by today. Um, can we just stand up to our feet today? Come on, how many of you got something today? I want you to lift your hands. Right? Jesus loves you so much, you know, church. There's no other way around it. There's no other way. He just loves you and He loves you. The only message I have for you today is that He loves you. And you look exactly like your father. You look exactly like your father. You know, many times I go into uh, places and if they see me and my father, they tell me, hey, you, you look like your father. You look like your father. They tell my brother as well. You look a bit like your mother and a bit like your father. You're a mix. 
And my elder brother, he looks exactly like my mother. Talks like my mother as well. You know? And... <laughs> No, that wasn't negative, guys. Why are you laughing? <laughs> All right, and, 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 and so wherever you go, right, people know, hey, this is, uh, people know that oh, you are Jonathan's son. And uh, the other day we went to, um, to Singapore to meet a friend. So when the, my friend looked at me and he looked at my brother and he was like, dude, you look exactly like him. Are you his brother? Then he was like, yeah, he's my brother. Because people recognize so when you go, when you're plugged into the source, wherever you go, people will recognize, hey, this, there is something different about this guy. There is something different. So today I encourage you, church, plug in yourself back to the source. How do I do that? Just go into your room, shut the door and just, just sit down there. I, I don't need you to pray in tongues. The Bible doesn't say that for God so loved the world that He sent tongues. For God so loved the world that He sent Jesus. His his only son, Jesus, is for you. So go into, go into your room, shut the door and just spend time with the Lord. Well, how do I spend time with the Lord? I take my phone, I play a song, a worship song and I just sit down there and I'm like, God, I'm here today. Jesus, I'm here. What do you want to speak to me? And I'll start weeping, church. Why is that? It's because of the presence of the Lord. He's so, he's so close. Can you imagine the creator of the universe is right beside you, Hari. He's right inside of you. He's right with you. And he's telling son, daughter, come back to the source. It's not too late. Come back to the source. You may be broken. You may feel like you're the worst person on earth standing in church. You may feel like you're a hypocrite never once God thinks about that of you and all he's saying is come back to the source in times when you're telling God all your problems as how he interrupted the son he's going to interrupt you and say hey I love you stop stop I don't even remember those sins stop and I love you so much so we're just going to worship in the wild right? and, I, and I'm just going to come back and we're going to plug ourselves back to the source, which is Jesus. Amen? Can we just worship with a song? Upheld by your strength. On your shoulders. On your shoulders you walk. By your faith I stand. By your faith I stand. Come on, sing, cherish. Cherish by you, Lord. Treasured in your sight. So close to your heart. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Come on, sing so awesome. Come on, everyone, sing it out. So awesome is your love. So mighty is your hand. He loves you so much, church. On eagle's wings, you carry. shall be my strength so perfect is your love you sacrifice your son God amazing love reach out to me with joy to you I come not by my wisdom, not by my strength. Today, the Father is holding you today. Gently, you guide me, lead me by hand. Come sing total surrender. Total surrender Jesus, I am yours Now and forever In Christ I'll stand Come 
Consira Sing it one more time. He's so close to you, church. So awesome is your love. Come on, let them sing. So mighty is your hands. On eagles, on eagles' wings, you carry me. Your grace shall be my strength. So perfect is your love. Father, you sacrifice your son. You sacrifice your son. Amazing love. Amazing love reached out to me. With joy to you I come. To you I come. Isn't he lovely, church? Come on, let's not rush this moment. Just let the Lord minister to you right now. Let the Lord touch you right now. He loves you. He loves you. That's right, Jesus, Jesus. The Lord's coming upon you, brother. The Lord's coming upon you. Yes, yes. I see him just embracing you right now. Yes. Just give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. He loves you, and he loves you, and he loves you, and he loves you. Jesus, give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. That's right, Jesus, Jesus. That's right, the Lord's just coming upon you right now. I just feel the warmth of the Lord. Warmth of the Lord. That's right. Just let the Lord minister to you right now. He is your Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. He loves you. He loves you. The greatest story ever told. The greatest love story. Shall be my strength. Sing so perfect. It's so your love. He sacrificed his only son. You sacrificed your son. Amazing love reached out to me with joy to you. I come one last time, one last time. So awesome is your love. So mighty is your hand. Eagle's wings, you carry me. Your grace 
shall be my strength. So perfect is your love. You sacrifice your son. Amazing love reached out to me. Or to you I come, to you I come. Come. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, that you gave for us, Lord, that we might live, Lord Jesus. We know that 2,000 years ago, all our sickness, all our pain, all our disease, Lord, was nailed on that cross, God, and Jesus died together with it, oh God. But three days later, Father, Lord, we know that Jesus rose up again, but all our sickness, disease, worries, anxieties were still nailed on that cross, God, Jesus. It's still nailed on that cross, God. So, Lord, as we just get ready for communion today, come on, church, let's just open up our emblems today. Any one of you don't have it, if you could just lift up your hands, ushers will come and just give it to you right now. Your grace shall be my strength. Your love, you sacrificed your son. Sweet presence of God, love reached out. Come, thank you, God. To you, I come. Church, the message that this carries, that every time when we look at the bread, every time we look at the wine, we know that Jesus left all of his glory and stepped down into our brokenness, not to confront us, but to confront our brokenness. And he took everything and he nailed it on that cross that we might live a life of abundance and eternal life. In the book of Corinthians, you know, it says that just before Jesus went on the cross, he was spending time with his family. Before he went away, he was with the people he loved the most, the people he loved so much. And he was sitting together with the disciples. And he said, on the night when Jesus was betrayed, when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and he said, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. As often as you eat this bread, church, remember that in Isaiah 53, it says, By the stripes of Jesus, we have been healed. Where do you need healing today? I want you to remember it. And as you take this, it's called Zoe life. Zoe life. Communion brings life. The Zoe life of Jesus. As you take this, Know that the Lord is healing you. Let's take it together as one family. And, and in the same way, Jesus took the cup and he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you do this, as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, it says, And they overcome. They overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Church, if you need something, if you need a breakthrough today, this is your breakthrough. As you drink this, come on, receive your breakthrough. Let's drink it together as a family. When you put your cups down and just lift up your hands. And today, I want you to tell the Lord, Lord, I receive all that you have for me. That's right, just thank the Lord. Lord, I receive. That's right. Come on, take the next couple of seconds. No one remaining quiet here. Just tell the Lord, Lord, I receive what you have for me. Every healing I receive. Every financial breakthrough I receive. Every breakthrough in my family, I receive it right now in the name of Jesus. That's right, I receive a miracle right now, God. For those of you asking for a baby, come on, just receive it right now. For those of you asking for changes in your family, for every mother that's asking for a son to come back to the source, come on, just receive it right now. 
Come on, one last time. So awesome. So mighty is your hand. I sense angels singing together with you. Eagles wings, you carry me. Your grace shall be my strength. So perfect is your You sacrificed your son on easing love, reached out to me with joy to you. I come to you. Come on, lift your hands, church. Let's just pray for you today. Jesus, I thank you for every brother and sister here. Thank you for every spiritual mothers and fathers here. Lord, right now I pray your hand of blessing be upon them. Lord, where there needs to be healing. Father, as a family, we speak healing right now into our people. We speak healing right now. When there needs to be breakthrough, let there be breakthrough. Where there needs to be finance, Lord, open the gates of heaven, the treasury of heaven, and pour forth your finance upon these people, O oh God. Lord, bless them in their coming in and in their going out. Lord, they shall be the first and not the last. Whatever they command shall take place in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless your people. Lord, today as we go back, as we sit in the room, and we just sit together with you. Lord, I pray for encounters after encounters. As how Moses met you in the burning bush. Lord, we will meet you as well in that same way as well, God. I thank you for your presence upon your people as they walk out of this place. Be with them. We pray for your protection upon them. In Jesus' name I pray. And every child of God say, Amen. Can we give, a, can we give glory to Jesus today? Amen, Amen. Church, God bless you. Um, if you need prayer, please come to the front. Our leaders are ready to pray together with you. Remember, remember to plug yourself back to the source, all right? He loves you and he loves you and he loves you.